Hello, Cricketers. Welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. If this is your first time joining me, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Um, you see I have the, the box for my Cricut Maker and I also have my Cricut Explore Air 2 right here on the table with me. And I also have this hammer because you know what? Sometimes I get frustrated with both of these machines. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. 10 of the most frustrating things about owning a Cricut. Okay, I don't know if you own a Cricut Joy or a Quick Cricut Explore Air 2 or a Cricut Maker or if you have one of the older Cricut products from when they first came out. I don't. I'm very new to the Cricut world, but sometimes it can be frustrating, all of it. But I wanted to share today just some of the top 10 things that I've noticed just being a member of the cricket world. Now there can be some fantastic things about it, but there are some things that definitely make you want to just take the hammer and just, you know, go to work. Okay, but that would cost money and we don't want to do that. All right, so the first thing that I will say is when you get the box, it is beautiful, right? You see the box, you look at the pictures on the box, it is just like amazing. And this is the box from my Cricut Maker and I look at it and I look at the sides and I'm like, oh my goodness, the possibilities are endless and they are endless. And when I opened the box, I noticed that it came with um, some user's manuals and it tells me, and I have my user manual from my Cricut Explore Air 2 and I also have my the manual from the a Cricut Maker and it said, you know, tells you here and it, on the Maker it tells you to open me first and you get so, so excited because you have all these ideas swirling around in your head for things that you want to make and oh, you quickly start to realize that this box didn't come with everything you're going to need to make it. So um, when I looked through this manual, uh, when I first got my Explore Air 2 because that was the machine I owned first. Um, one of the things that kind of stands out to me now that I didn't recognize back then was that in here on page eight, I'm going to move my box in a minute. This is the color of my Explorer. You can see it already. Okay. It says it comes with the, the machine, the fine point blade, fine point pen, a light grip mat. Uh, a welcome book, a power adapter, a USB cable, Cricut Access trial membership, 50 ready to make projects and materials for your first project. And so you think, I, there are things, there's in this box, there are 50 ready to make projects? That's awesome. And then you quickly realize that you don't really get the projects, you get the ideas, right? So that's what's really in the box is the, the project ideas. And so when I'm looking, you know, as a newbie, you don't really pay attention to this, but like if you look at this, right, and you see this, this looks so beautiful and so peaceful and her crafting area is just so neat. It is amazing, right? But what you don't know is that on top of this frame, there's vinyl, then she has some felt and some string, and there's a frame with glass and you're, you you don't even realize that it's going to take work to get all of that on there and it has to be aligned just right and not only is there vinyl there's is there vinyl on here but there are different colors of vinyl and it's all lined up perfect okay it looks amazing and you don't you don't know to pay attention to that at first because you're just really looking at the picture you're not really paying attention to the process right so it's just so many things and then look they show you these cute little felt uh, puppets you can make and this just looks so easy and like, oh, I have a little baby and I know I'm going to make these for my baby. And then you start to realize that you need to purchase all of the, these things to make it because none of these, none of these things are in this box. Okay. There's nothing in the box, but what they said and where it says 50 ready to make projects, they, it really should have said 50 ready to make project ideas. All right, so I opened this box today. This is the box again, once again, from my Cricut Maker. And, you know, to be honest, what should have come in this box is what I've taken the time to write down on this paper, right? Because there are 10 things that I want to share with you today that we are going to discuss. Let me put this box down so we can kind of get into it. All right, so 
I call this the 10 most frustrating things about owning a Cricut. Now, do I love my Cricut? Absolutely. I love my Explore Air 2 and I love my Cricut Maker, but sometimes I do get frustrated. There are some frustrating things about owning it, right? So the materials, you just, you're going to need a lot of materials that you didn't know about ahead of time. Most people buy a Cricut and they think I'm going to make shirts and I'm going to sell them, right? But you didn't realize that you would need different types of vinyl and 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 the different colors and how to layer it and how to size it and resize it and it was, there are so many things that that go along with making a shirt so that's number one is that you just automatically start to feel overwhelmed when you open the box number two of the top 10 things top 10 most frustrating things um you'll need to know the difference between a gif gif Okay, I think it's called a GIF or a GIF, a DXF, a BMP, a PNG, and an SVG. And not only will you need to know the difference, but you'll need to know when to use each one and how to use each one. And most of us, if you're anything like me, you've never even heard of those things before you owned a Cricut, right? You take a picture with your phone and you don't think about what kind of photo it is or what you don't know. Oh, I just took a JPEG. I didn't even know you could remove a background from an image. Did you know that a PNG is just a, a, a picture with a, with no background? I didn't know that. I didn't even know that existed before <laughs> I owned a Cricut. Okay, so you'll need to know that. Um, so when you're in these crafting groups and they say, uh, give me some SVG dumps, well, when you get that SVG dump, if you don't know how to use it, it's a waste of time. Right? So that's why in my crafting group on Facebook, we don't do SVG dumps. We don't, that's, we, no. Because most of the time, especially if you're a beginner, you're still learning what an SVG is. And most people who even use the term SVG, they still don't know what it means. They call them SVGs, but that's really an acronym, right? Okay, so that's number two. Number three, you join all of these Cricut crafting groups you join 50 of them and they're Cricut crafting groups for beginners and you ask a question and one of three things might happen. One, nobody will have an answer to your question because they might not even understand your question. Number two, they might send you to go watch a video on YouTube. Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> welcome to Cricketing with Delonda. Or they send you to, they ask you to Google it. They'll say, oh, Google, Google your question for a faster response. Mm, well, that kind of is frustrating too because you're thinking, I joined this group for beginners because I wanted to be able to ask my question and nobody has the answer to my question. Well, you're among other beginners who might not know the answer. They might have the same question you have and they'll put an F under your post, which means they're following because they want that same answer too, right? All right. Um, number four of the, let me move my paper over so you can just, I have so many. All right, number four, you see a font you like and you think that is amazing, right? I want to use that font. What, what is the name of that font? And nobody knows. Nobody knows the name of it or they'll tell you to go look it up. They'll tell you to go to thefont.com and you don't know what that is or they'll tell you to go to what the font and then you still don't know how to use that or they'll tell you to look in design space. Well, if you knew how to do that, you wouldn't really be asking. So that can be confusing too. I um, have these shirts right here as an example. So this is a shirt that my husband purchased for me maybe about two years ago. And I thought this would be a perfect example of something to sh share with you because this shirt has six different fonts on it okay so whoever made this is the queen of crafts because or king but I, I doubt if a man made it but I don't know I don't I don't know um, so at the top this says yes I'm a so that's one font and then this one is bigger so that's a whole different font and then this third line looks like this one so probably the same and then this one looks like it was sliced out of a, a black border so that's a whole different font because it's thin and not thick like this one and then this one looks like the second line so these will probably cut together and then this is a, a thir another option of font because it's not like any of these and then this is a whole different so 
just even on one shirt, even though all of it is black, there are several different font choices on this one shirt. And if somebody says, what is that fifth row? I couldn't even tell you. I would probably do the same thing that most people do, which is tell you to look on Defont.com. But there are, are thousands and thousands of font choices on Defont.com and it's hard to just find the one that you're looking for. So that can be frustrating too. Trust me, I get it. This shirt right here is another example. Now this one only has one type of font on it, but this shirt, um, well, I might even have two. I, it has two different sizes for sure and it has a red heart. I paid $20 for this shirt. 20. I paid $20 for this shirt. And it just has three words. I love my husband. Um, I was in uniform with the other people who were wearing this shirt. And so, you know, the shirts themselves, while the shirt might only cost $4, the person who's making the shirt, which is in this case, it would be you, you can charge what you want to charge because I, what I do realize is whoever made this shirt, they had to do a little bit of work. They, you know, put the red heart on there. So that's a different color vinyl than the white. And they had to weed out um, in these letters. It wasn't very much weeding on here, but um, she was able to charge what she wanted to charge. Okay. Number five of the most frustrating things about owning a Cricut. Um, you want to print something bigger than what Cricut Design Space offers, right? You see these signs and you think, I want to make that for my house. I want to have a, one of those big welcome signs and I don't want to have 50 mats or I don't want to um, try to cut it and line it up. That's hard. That is a hard thing to do. It is hard when you ask a question and no, I, no one can help you. There are videos on YouTube that teach you how to do it, but that can also be a part of the frustrating process of owning a Cricut. All right, number six, you need to be a millionaire to make two products because you use up all of your vinyl <laughs> on your first 17 attempts, right? So I have this box of scraps and I'm gonna share it with you. Yes, it's a Houston Rockets box. Mind your business. This is just, Scraps, this, I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this because, I mean, there I, I, I've tried every method. I've tried, you know, put them in, put them in a, uh, these, these uh, pocket folders. I've tried putting them in a box. I have a drawer of scraps. I have just scraps on top of, like there, you, you, get, you get my drift, you, you get my drift. And I save it because, you know, maybe I'll be able to use it at some point. But, you know, this this is not only big pieces of scraps. There are small pieces of scraps. There are mistakes. Look at this. This was supposed to say Panthers. But glitter vinyl is not heaven sent. And it's hard to work with. For me, it is. Some of you might be glitter vinyl experts. I'm not. Okay, this is also glitter vinyl. But it's a scrap because... This is all messed up and I just keep it because I think maybe I'll be able to use a square here for something, I don't know. Um, look, glitter vinyl, glitter vinyl. This is more glitter vinyl, okay? So you have all these scraps and this is money. All of these, none of this stuff in this box was free. So sometimes you feel like you need to be a millionaire in order to make something because it just, it takes time, it takes patience, it takes money, it takes practice, it takes trial and error. And for me, a lot of times it's more error, okay? So number seven, you need a second or third job because you need to have, <laughs> in addition to having a machine that costs three or $400, depending on when you purchased it or where you purchased it from, that's not the end, right? Because the machine just does the cutting. Once your your uh, vinyl is cut, you need something to put the vinyl on. And so you need, you might think you need a fabulous printer. And look, I, I brought this up here and I want to show this to you because these are all things that I wouldn't have known that I needed. You might need, you know, um, what is this? Clear, 
crystal clear acrylic coating. You need wood, you need tape, you need armor etch, you need a small heat press in addition to your big heat press. You need a strong grip mat, you need a standard grip mat, you need a longer standard grip mat, you need freezer paper, you need parchment paper, you need Mod Podge, you need a lint roller, you need keychain blanks, you need a shirt, you'll need Cricut, you'll need Cricut pens in order to make cards, you need, I mean, you need acrylics if you want it, the, and this is not even half, this is not even a fourth, this is not even a fourth of the things you think you'll need because you want to make stuff. You see somebody making something, you think, I want to make that. Well, you need the, the items. You need to have the stuff to make the stuff, right? You need card stock. I could go on and on and on, but I know you understand what I'm, what I'm saying, okay? Number eight, you don't have enough space to store all of your materials because like, look, I have this stuff just in this container right here and as you can tell, I am in a small confined space and my cricketers know, my, my Facebook group knows very well that I am in my son's room. I don't have a crafting room. This is, I don't have a fancy studio. I don't have a, a big area to craft in. So I have to kind of make do with what I have. I use my pegboard. I have hung my mats on the wall. I have, you know, behind that camera, you don't even want to know what's behind that camera. There's actually a bed behind that camera because this is still my son's room. Um, but I have, you know, containers and compartments and I use this to store my vinyl. Um, and I, if this is starting to get filled up, but I have a, a drawer behind that camera too that has a vinyl that is flat. I have, it's just, you have to have space and you have to organize it in a way <clears throat> that's best for you. And I'll tell you that um, my crafting space, you know, it, look at this book, look how clean and, and neat that is. When you make something for me, it doesn't look anything like what's in this book. Once I've made even one thing, it could be the smallest, <laughs> the smallest thing ever, there's gonna be a mess and it's going to require some cleanup time so you need to have space for your stuff and i'll move this so i can finish my my little chat with you number nine you have decided that you purchased the cricket because you want to start selling shirts and um <clears throat> you want to start to recoup some of the money that you've spent on all of the things that i just shown you in that in that basket and you <clears throat> aren't sure about how much to sell for or you're not sure about the you know what are the different types of vinyl and what is heat transfer vinyl and what is premium vinyl and which one should I use and if you still have all of those questions my advice to you is don't sell because it's not really fair to you and it's not fair to the person who would be giving you money for something that you are not really prepared to make right I am a, the type of customer who wants to get, I want to get what I pay for. So if I'm paying $20 for a shirt, I want to feel like the shirt is worth $20. I don't want to look at the shirt and notice that there's an, a mistake and I can't bring that mistake back to you. So think about that before you get into sales because that is not a good idea. It's almost like going to a restaurant and the cook just started that day or they didn't know you know, it's a seafood restaurant and they just learned what fish is, okay? So don't do not do that to someone else because I'm sure you would not want that done to you. All right, and then number 10, and really, you guys, this list could be 30, 30 things long, but these are just 10 of them. You've pressed your design onto your shirt or your pencil pouch or your, you know, any, whatever fabric you've pressed it on. And then you can't get it off. You can't get that clear plastic off because you don't know whether the vinyl is hot peel or cold peel and you don't have the package that it came in. So you can't, you don't have anything to refer to. 
and you go back to Facebook and to one of your cricket groups and you ask a question like, what do I do? And nobody knows because they don't know what kind of vinyl it is and you don't either. That can be frustrating too. Trust me, I know. I am a part of some of those same groups you are a part of and I have some of the same questions you have. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, we, we frustrate ourselves thinking that other people might be able to answer questions for us that we can't answer and um, all of it can be frustrating. So I would definitely still suggest don't quit. This is going to be a learning process. If you've watched my video about perfection is overrated and don't quit, don't give up. You purchased the machine for a reason. It's open already. You tried it and you can't return it. Don't give up. Don't quit. You can do this. You can do this. Find the right group. Find the right support system. I would not suggest relying on beginners because they might have the same questions you have, but don't really always try to go to experts either because they they talk in terms that you don't know what they're saying. So they say, oh, you just need to uh, change that to a PNG and then, well, I don't know what you're talking about, so I can't do that. Um, so. I don't know. I, I know it can all be frustrating. I know that, you know, you want to, where's my hammer? You want to get that hammer and you just want to, you know, sometimes you just want to beat the machine and just give up or throw it out the window. Don't do it. Don't quit. Don't give up. Remember why you purchased it. Seek help from someone who is willing to help you. If you are not a member of my group on Facebook, Cricket Crafting with Delanda, I welcome you to join us. Um, they are a very encouraging group. They are a very helpful group. We don't do dumps in our group. We help each other. We teach each other. We learn together. There are no really no experts. I'm certainly not an expert. I am still, still, still learning and still willing to share what I learn. But I, I mean, we have to be real, you know, I have, I'm going to be honest with you and show you just my truth. When I make a mistake, I'm going to say, I made a mistake and I don't know, but uh, I'm willing to laugh at myself and I don't mind you laughing at me. Um, we can laugh together because sometimes you have to laugh to keep from crying. So thanks for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.